How are we doing, class? So this week we're going to be going over carboxylic acids. This is going to be a pretty long lesson, but as always, you've got the retrieval grid there. So answering these retrieval questions, full sentences, and then we'll go over the answers. Do you think? So the first question, which reagent can detect a carbonyl group? You should say pray these reagents can detect carbonyl groups and it's not specific to aldehydes or ketones and then the next question is asking us which reagent can detect aldehydes and that's Tollens reagent which detects aldehydes and if you remember from last lesson it's because aldehydes have that carbonyl carbon attached to a hydrogen which makes it more readily oxidized and then the last one what is the formula for potassium dichromate Potassium dichromate is K2Cr2O7. So why now? Why are we learning this now? So I've got on the left hand side salicylic acid and we've got a willow tree there and on the right hand side I've got free methyl butanoic acid and I've got a picture of some well imagine they're swe uh, sweaty feet. So think about possible careers you can do talking about carboxylic acids and think about how this relates to last lesson. So last lesson we were looking at carbonyl groups and we saw that one thing that can happen is that the aldehyde can be oxidized to its corresponding carboxylic acid. So if we're looking at salicylic acid it's possible that the ald aldehyde version of this could potentially become salicylic acid from willow trees and a possible career you can do into go into this um smelly feet actually have this molecule that is prominent in the signature of the smell free methyl butanoic acid so you could go into dermatology if you want to develop a chemical that pro probably breaks this down or masks the smell the specification points that we're going to go through are just these two specification points here but because I want you to really understand the science behind it, it's going to be a pretty long lesson. So get your coffee or Red Bull ready. Alright, so carboxylic acid, they have this functional group COOH and I've got the actual displayed formula of that carboxylic functional group on the left hand side. Have a go at these challenge questions. Okay so when I ask you what makes this an acid? Some of you could say that it's because it got, it's got a hydrogen attached to a relatively electronegative atom but remember acids the main thing is that they donate hydrogen ions, they donate protons. Next, I'll ask you to draw this functional group and then attach the partial charges onto the functional group. Well, we know that oxygen is electronegative, so the electron is going to move further towards that. So the carbon and the hydrogen will have partially, they'll have delta positives, while the oxygens have delta negatives. And this carboxylic group, it has both a carbonyl group and a hydroxyl group. So the carboxylic acid group has a carbonyl and a hydroxyl functional group. If we're thinking about naming carboxyl acids, what we need to first do is find the longest carbon chain and wherever we have the carboxylic group, that's going to be the one position. So we have the suffix oic acid. And we identify any branches that might be on that main chain. And we see we've got a methyl group there. We've got four carbon chains in the longest chain. And we've got a methyl group on a specific carbon. Then we just need to arrange everything in alphabetical order. So we've got a methyl group on the third carbon. The one position is the carboxylic group. And that longest chain is, bu is a butan group. It's a butan so adding the oic to the end, we've got free methyl butanoic acid. When you get skeletal structures, it can look a little bit crazy. So have a go at trying to name 
this molecule here and I'll give you the prompts on the right hand side. So we have to first find the longest chain and remember yeah, your carbonyl carbon, that's going to be your position one. So we're going clockwise here and we see that the longest chain has five carbons. We are identifying any branches now. We've got a branch that's a methyl group on two and three. So it's two, three dimethyl. I'm putting all that together. That is two, three dimethyl pentanoic acid. How about this one here? And to help you out, I'll cross out that first step. So work from step two all the way to step four. When you've got a benzene ring, it's a little bit different because now we're not counting from the carbonyl carbon. We're counting from the carbon that's attached to the carboxylic group. So that's going to be our position one. And to have the um, smallest amount of numbers, to have the smallest value numbers, we should go clockwise here. So that the nitro group, which is our branch, will be on carbon free. So this is easily free nitro benzoic acid. How about trying to draw from the name? So try and draw this molecule, 2-hydroxy benzoic acid. Well, you just have the benzoic acid and then on the second carbon, which could be on the left or the right, it doesn't matter, just add your hydroxyl group. Now try and use the OMP naming scheme to give this another name. This is on the second carbon, which is right next to the first carbon, so it's upright. And remember, awful, like orthodox, is correct, correct speech, right speech. So you're standing up correctly, you're standing up straight. So the second carbon is O, so that's O-hydroxybenzoic acid. And just as a reminder, the third position will be meta, and the fourth position will be para. Salicylic acid is extracted, as I said before, from willow trees and makes the drug aspirin. We've got an isomer of this molecule, M-hydroxybenzoic acid, and this is found in pineapples. Try and draw that structure. Remembering that the carboxyl group is position one on our benzene ring and M is for free. If you turn the M, rotate it, it looks like a free. So we have to put the hydroxy group, hydroxyl group now on the third carbon. Okay, this next bit, you don't need to know how to name this, okay? But for the next activity, it's necessary. So this group here is acetoxy. It's almost, it almost looks like a carboxyl, carboxylic acid, but there's no hydrogen or anything attached on the right-hand side. Technically, this should be called ethanol oxy, but for the next activity, we need to call it by this other name, which is American. So bear in mind, we've got two carbons, and then that's where we get the ethan, so for the ethanol oxy, and the oxy is for the other carbonyl carbon and then the oxygen attached to the carbonyl carbon. So now I have this monstrosity over here. Have a go at these challenge questions. The chemical formula for this is C9H8O4. And since you've got a chemical formula, the molar mass should be easy to work out. 180.159 grams per mole. Thinking about everything I just showed you in the last activity, what should be the name of this molecule? 
we can see that it's a benzoic acid. And on the second position, we have that ethanol oxy, but because we're going to call it the old, well, we're calling it the American name, that should give you 2 acetoxybenzoic acid. And that's actually the formula for aspirin. And as I said, I'm stressing it again, aspirin is made from salicylic acid. Let's now look at the solubility of carboxylic acids. Look at the partial charges here. Have a go at these challenge questions. Well, it's a, obviously a carboxylic acid and we've got two carbons, so that's ethanoic acid. And if you remember from hydrogen bonds, they're forming from lone pairs. So we need to make sure that that hydrogen bond is coming out of one of the lone pairs. And that is reacting, that is interacting, I should say, with a hydrogen on water and showing the partial charges on the water. Because again, that oxygen is electronegative. The hydrogens, therefore, are partially positive, that delta positive there. And the key thing to note here is that both the carbonyl and the hydroxy groups are both polar. And another thing to stress, just like I said, you need to make sure that the hydrogen bond is on the lone pair. We're seeing all of these partial charges now, and you probably think that carboxylic acids must be soluble, but only carboxylic acids with a chain length of up to four are soluble. After that, they start becoming insoluble because they've got that hydrocarbon chain. Okay, dicarboxylic acids have two carboxyl groups. Draw the skeletal structure of propane dioic acid. All right, so we need three carbons. Um, both ends need to have a carboxyl group and it's a skeletal structure so it should look like this. I want you now to predict the solubility of dicarboxylic acids compared to regular carboxylic acids. What do you think? Well, if one carboxylic group could form hydrogen bonds, having two means that you can form a lot more hydrogen bonds. So dicarboxylic acids are obviously more soluble than regular carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids can undergo two reactions. They can undergo redox reactions with metals and they can undergo neutralization reactions with bases. And let's not forget that acids form salts, okay? And we can see what's probably happening using the images on the right hand side. We're losing that hydrogen, which is what acids do, and you're forming a negative ion. So look at the word carboxylic acid. The salt that's formed is a carboxylate iron, okay? Keep that at the back of your mind. Obviously, we're going to use it later. All right, I've got the reaction of a certain acid here. Have a go at this challenge question. Well, this question is asking you to deduce the strength of the carboxylic acid and give you a reason why. We can see that it's a reversible reaction. That means that this acid partially dissociates or partially is ionized. That means it must be a weak acid because remember, strong acids fully dissociate. They fully ionize. So carboxylic acids are weak acids because they partially dissociate. Now let's go on to actually naming the anion of the acids. Here on the left hand side, we've got ethanoic acid. Think about what I talked about with the salt. Carboxylic acids form carboxylate ions. So ethanoic acid forms an ethanoate ion. What I'd like you to do now is draw 
both chemicals and name the salts of these chemicals. The first one might have been tricky. We know that the first part of the name, the first name is going to be the metal, so that's sodium. And the way we end this one is benzoate, so it's sodium benzoate. This one was probably easier. We've got one, two, three carbons. Our metal is potassium, so the first name is potassium. That gives us potassium propanoate. So, aqueous solutions of carboxylic acid react with metals in redox reactions to form a carboxylic salt and hydrogen gas. I want you to write a balanced equation for propanoic acid and magnesium. Also include the state symbols. Alright, this one might have given you a little bit of trouble, but the key thing to remember here is that magnesium is in group 2. And the carboxylate is only a minus 1 ion, so you need 2 lots of it. So we have to balance 2 moles of propanoic acid with 1 mole of magnesium to give us the salt. Now I would like you to write out a balanced equation for propanoic acid and potassium again include the state symbols well our potassium is in group one so we don't need two moles lots of our acid so it's one mole of the acid reacting with one mole of the metal to give us one mole of the salt and one mole of hydrogen gas so when we add carboxylic acids with metals, we'll notice two things. We'll notice the metal disappearing and we'll also notice an effervescence of hydrogen gas. When we're looking at neutralization reactions now, reactions with metal oxides, the carboxylic acid will form salt and water. When we have reactions with alkalis, again, the carboxylic acid will form a salt and water. But when we're reacting them with carbonates, the carboxylic acid will form a salt, water, and also carbon dioxide. When we're reacting the carboxylic acid with a metal, we saw that we form a salt and hydrogen gas. But when it's with a metal oxide or alkalis, it forms salt and water. But if it's a carbonate, we also form carbon dioxide along with that salt and water. So, let's look at the reaction with a metal oxide. Can you write the balanced equation for ethanoic acid and calcium oxide? Again, include the state symbols. The key here again is that the calcium is in group 2, so we're going to need 2 moles of our acid. And that gives us a calcium ethanoate salt and water. Now write the balanced equation for ethanoic acid and magnesium oxide. Again, because magnesium is in group 2, we're going to need 2 moles of our acid. Reacting with 1 mole of our magnesium oxide, giving us magnesium ethanoate and water. So similarly, we're going to look at the reactions with alkalis now. So write a balanced equation for the reaction with ethanoic acid and sodium hydroxide. Again, include your state symbols. The sodium, group one, so we only need one mole of each. That's going to give us sodium, ethanoate, and water. But let's spice this up a little bit. Write the ionic equation for this reaction. Remember, the ion Remember with ionic equations, I'm just going to quickly briefly go through them here. We split up the ions, so we have the carboxylate and also the hydrogen ion. 
we have the sodium and the hydroxide ion and then we do the same on the right hand side. Our spectator ion will be the ethanoate ion but it will also be the sodium ion as well. So just like with every neutralization reaction your ionic equation will be your hydrogen ion reacting with a hydroxide ion to make water on the right hand side that's liquid form. Now write a balanced equation for ethanoic acid reacting with sodium carbonate. Because the carbonate is a 2 minus ion, we're going to need two lots of sodium in our left hand side. Therefore, we're going to need two lots of our acid because each one has to react with the two sodiums that we have. And that gives us liquid water and carbon dioxide gas. So when we're testing for the carboxyl group, carboxylic acids, unlike phenols, can react with carbonate. So if we have a reaction, we can distinguish between phenols and carboxylic acid because they react with carbonates and phenols don't react with carbonates. And there we go with this lesson. So look at your specification points, tick off what you can do. That second one includes quite a lot inside there. So make sure you can do each individual thing inside there. And if you can't, obviously you're watching a video, go back and re-watch it, try out the challenges again. If you're confused with anything, um, write a comment down below and I'll catch you guys next week.